Welcome back to day four of the 2014 World Championship. We're shifting into gear for another battle of the LCS between SK Gaming and Team Solo Mids, the number three European team taking on the number one North American team. And in a day where underdogs have somewhat reigned supreme, <laughs> yeah. SK may be getting some hope and some faith. I mean, here's the funny thing, too. If you're playing the, the underdog story here, SK can suddenly dash all the hopes of the underdog story if they knock out TSM right here. Uh, Solo Mid have to win this game if they want the tiebreaker match. That will be played again at the end of the day. But SK... Uh, despite the fact that they were mathematically eliminated from the tournament, they showed up well against TPA, and they might show up well here. Talking about SK, they've had the opportunity to watch Team Solomon earlier in the day against Royal Club. We're anticipating a rumble ban. Is there anything else that SK can learn from that matchup in preparation for this game? Well, I just want to point out that SK is playing on the blue side, I believe, so that yeah. actually frees up a lot of their bans. Purple side's kind of tight for bands, but blue side, they'll definitely have room for that rumble band. And they, they've watched the games before, so they've known what, what bands have worked against TSM and which bands have not. And obviously, SK is a large underdog mm -hmm. in this scenario, but I think that blue side is going to be very important. When Freddy has had such a hard time getting champions that he's good on, uh, I mean, who do you ban here? Because you've got to ban out Nidalee, you've got to ban out Aatrox, you, you have to ban out Alistar. Both teams just side. like Zillion, it seems, so or Kale. it's like forcing each other to ban Zillion. Right, well. but it, I mean, you're going to get a good, solid, yeah. either Maokai or Alistar, and something that Freddy is good on is going to show up as a first pick for SK. Crumbs? No, I, was I agree, completely agree on that. You know TSM will 100% ban Nidalee. They want to get rid of the Alistar, and then you have, they have to ban Aatrox as yeah, well. You, yeah, you're going to have to get rid of Aatrox. They're going to get Maokai. Well, let's just turn our attention to Team Solo mid very quickly. Uh, Wild Turtle is the guy that we kept looking at as the uh, potential weak link in TSM. He's got three games played as Tristana, and he is killing it. 21-116. Yes, comps have been built around him. You cannot deny that fact. But day four of groups, and he's not the weak link maybe we were anticipating. He had a very wobbly laning phase, but after that, his team fights were really good. He had good positioning, good follow up, and he was orb walking, kiting people backwards. SK has shown that they did not have the greatest laning phase, so that won't be as big of an issue for Turtle. So he can definitely show up in this series. Freak. Yeah, I actually want to point out um, there's people who are tracking all the LCS players playing Korean solo queue. And Wild Turtle has, uh, first of all, he made Master in 44 games. Granted, the accounts are seeded into Diamond 3, but he's the only Master player in under with under 100 games played. He's also got the second highest win rate behind Lust Boy. So these guys are actually playing darned well while they are here. And clearly, TSM are stepping up. Crumbs and Monty, we need to get to predictions, so save those thoughts for now. I am going to run down the desk, ask you guys who you think is going to win. North America or Europe, SK or TSM. I want to start with Crumbs. Who's your victor? Seeing how TSM performed and seeing the first match, SK versus TSM, I'm going with TSM this time around. All right, TSM. Next up, I want to know from Crepo, who's going to pick your victory here? I've already talked too much. I'm going to keep it short. TSM's going to win this game, I believe. All right, next in line, Monty. I wish I could make my predictions after picks and bans. Uh, I do think that the Maokai is going over, but even so, unless they ban Lulu, which uh, Dyrus has shown he's very good at bullying Maokai with, uh, I still think TSM's definitely got a big edge here. I'm picking him. Finally. I also say TSM. All right, TSM down the line. We know they're going to win the public vote, but just by how much? 88% of you guys are in agreement that Team Solomid is going to win this game. Let's see if they can actually do it by throwing it to the cast of the list to take us into game. Thank you very much, Quick Shot, and it is time to get to the starting lineups for these two teams. Starting out on the blue side, it is SK Gaming. That means Freddy122 is carrying hard in that top lane. Sven Skerin in the jungle. Jez is in the mid lane. Candy Panda as the AD carry and it rated on support. And of course, on the red side, it's Team Solo mid with Dyrus in the top lane. Amazing in the jungle. Bjergsen in the mid lane and the duo lane of Wild Turtle and Lost Boy. Ooh, all right, so this is a rematch. So if we look back at the first game that these two teams played, yes, uh, SK did not have Svensk Aaron, so that is going to help them out. But man, they had some issues that had nothing to do with Svensk Aaron. The picks and bans were horrendous for yeah. SK yeah. the first time around. They gave TSM a Yasuo God comp. The, basically, the picks for everybody they were happy with in their position. Alistair top for Dyrus, amazing on Lee Sin, one of his favorite champions, if not his most favorite champion. And then Nami for Les Boy. All of these things. And then Trist for Wild Turtle, like they pretty much got everything that they wanted last time around. So there are easy improvements for SK to make 
just in the picks bands that don't even have to do with Sven Skaren. Of course, the other thing was the mid camp from uh, Amazing definitely destroyed Jezus, and Sven Skaren can help out with that. And the crucial thing is, well, of course, TSM will be looking to ban the Nidalee, et etc., for the top lane. SK have to start looking to do the same to the supports because simply put, and rated, he can't play Jenny. He does not play Nami. These are the supports in the meta right now, and they're not in his pool, so he has to look towards something else, and that frees up everything for Lost Point. It's got to be all three bands towards Freddy again. The way that he's been playing this tournament <laughs> yeah. is just his head and shoulders above everyone else on his team. And when it comes to the ban phase, it seems to me fairly easy that they're going to go that way. We do see Tristana banned here, though, by SK Gaming. So Turtle's not going to get that this time around. There's one good adaptation from SK Gaming already. So that's something. They have banned Zed. That hasn't done much to slow down Bjergsen at all. Uh, but it is definitely one of his extremely strong champions. So can't fault them for that. Again, as you said, these are probably going to be all Freddy bands here coming from Solo Mid. Yeah, no surprise if Aatrox is the final ban there. There's a rise against Dyrus. That means Rumble is allowed through unless Freddy takes it first. But I think that's going to be a leasing first lock-in for SK Gaming. Here will come, or will it? Will they actually let the Aatrox through and think, you know what, we can face it so we can get the lease in? Yeah, the Aatrox is is really, really, it's something of an enigma for the entire world except for Europe. Like except Europe, for Freddy. Except for Freddy, not that, really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Darian Just was the only one. Darian was the only other guy, and he's not there anymore. There is the Aatrox bad, and Freddy's <laughs> like, for Christ's sake, not again. Well, it leaves the first choice here for SK, and they did not waste any time. So seems like things have gone to plan for them. It's a first bit Kha'Zix for Svenska, and obviously missed the first three games of the World Championship. He's going to have to be a, a big why, player for them. Why would you go ahead and take away Kha'Zix if when Amazing loves Lee Sin, and you're giving away all these power picks? There's Maokai's available. Freddy has played Maokai. He hasn't performed, you know, as well as he has on other champions with it, but still, the Kha'Zix is not a first pick high priority to me versus TSM. Well, it's an interesting one, and we're going to see what Freddy has to play. Will it be the uh, one standard Dr. Mundo in that top lane for him once again? He's played it a number of times. Morgana is a possibility. That is Enrated's champion, the one that they've got the victory on, as is the Kha'Zix. And, you know, with Sven Skoen doing a lot of the calling in game along with Freddy. I wonder if he's just had the the first voice when it comes to that first pick. And the interesting thing as well is that you said earlier on, if Maokai goes through an SK first pick, it Dyrus will probably just take a Lulu and bully him out in the lane completely. On the other side, with Maokai for Dyrus, Freddy doesn't play Lulu or certainly hasn't played it at all Ooh. throughout the season. And the playoffs. There we go. That's so another it is. another counter. There it is. So they were baiting their first round. That's the Kazakh's pick. A complete bait into the Maokai pick. But Maokai still has a good late game, uh, even if, you know, Swain does pretty well early. And we'll see how it works out. I've not seen Freddy on Swain. Of course, we did sort of see it in Europe a couple of times up against the Maokais, but it does mean Cogmore this time around is being picked up. Instead, Lucian is out there. Tristana was banned away. He's come to favor Cogmore this time around instead of not Lucian. Wild Turtle is one of those North American AD carries that does play Cogmore. Him along with Sneaky. Uh, they've picked it basically when Trist is not available. So uh, it's definitely something that he can't perform on, and it, it's okay because they do have Janna as well. It's a strong team fight here from TSM. They've got Maokai for peeling and uh, Janna for the knockback. Negative win ratio for him there. They'll played seven, won three, lost four. We see SK Gaming hovering over now, which honestly, if you're going to bring something like that out, maybe you're going to do it for the final game of the World Championships where you're mathematically out. But What did you just say? Nar? Nar? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought you said Nar. Maybe I was just hoping for that support Nar, uh, Nar Mick that Mata was talking about. That's, it I, is what he said. I say oh, Nar. <laughs> the English American translation is completely lost. I'll just be the translator in amongst you guys. But what is for certain is Vayne is locked in by Candy nah. Panda. He has only played it once in the summer, but it did used to be one of his strong champions. We'll see how it works out in this one. Of course, we've seen some incredible vein mechanics throughout this tournament already from the likes of Imp getting that pentakill. And Ziggs in the middle by Jezus. That's something finally, that's eluded totally. us. And like you say, finally, it's a champion that he's had great success on again, just like Wild Turtles Gogmore. He is only three and four on it, so he's not 
had a positive win ratio, but as a champion, he can play sitting back. Good. But the problem is, it leaves Syndra open for Bjergsen. To be, for, to be fair, Jezus, even on his favorite champions, Orianna and Ari, he has not had good performances on. So mm, that's true. Dip, dipping deep into something else, can't fault them for that. The Syndra from Bjergsen is terrifying. That's yeah. often the ban that goes along with Zed when people face TSM. Whew, they're very bold by uh, SK this time around. They're, you can tell they're taking chances here, trying to bait the Maokai pick to, in order to pick Swain into it, leaving up that Syndra. All very dangerous things. And TSM have a very, very strong team fighting composition here. They even have the ability to get picks with Syndra. If they get control of the map and control that vision, it's going to be very, very dangerous for SK moving around. Well, that was one of the changes that they made to this banning phase. They banned Syndra in their last encounter here. So we'll see if Bjergsen makes them basically cry for that decision because <laughs> you have to feel that if Bjergsen hits his form on a champion like Syndra, let's not forget, if you go all the way back to the beginning of Bjergsen when he finally hit the ripe old age of 17 and was allowed to play in the LCS, came out with Syndra, which we'd not seen up uh -huh. until that point in the European LCS, got his pen to kill early on. He's, he's terrifying if he's having a good game. So the first one in the LCS, I believe, as well. So it was a big turnaround from the man that made his mark in Europe and now absolutely is making his mark for the North American scene. How are TSM going to approach this one? Because this is all about, do you avoid Samsung White? For TSM? Yeah, they definitely, they def this is a must-win game for them. Because, yeah. I mean, avoiding Samsung White is a huge, huge bonus if they can secure the first spot here. So I think uh, that they're really, all they're going to have to worry about is Dyrus in this game. Because, obviously, SK's whole weird champion select was all targeted at Dyrus. They've got Swain for the early game and then Vayne for the late game. They want to hunt him down with that true damage. It's been used by multiple people taking that Vayne in the late game versus Malachi if he ever tries to split because Dyrus is the one with teleport, so Candy Panda can hunt him down. They've got a lot of stuff that they bet on this, but Dyrus had a great game earlier today, and we've seen how he gets once he starts off the day really, really strong. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to get involved on this one, of course, don't forget to tweet at LOL Esports using the hashtag SKWIN or the hashtag TSMWIN. I'm sure everybody is now awake in North America, ready and waiting for this one, along, of course, with Europe, who will be just enjoying their evening as this game gets underway. Sven Skeren back in the team and making the calls. The final match for SK potentially the final match for TSM. Of course, if they do go 5-1, and one, they will play a tiebreaker. That will happen after the Samsung White EDG game completes. And potentially, Woo! there could be two tiebreakers. We'll see how that works out. Tiebreakers galore. Looking forward to a long day today. Funny fact about this one as well. It's Europe versus North America, but there are actually three Danish <laughs> players. Uh, there are actually more Danish players than North Americans. Where's uh, the fish here when you need him? Well, Exactly. We should have brought him in for a <laughs> special cameo appearance for this. I mean, the mid lane is probably the obvious one to look at there. Jezus versus Bjergsen. Bjergsen being so dominant for his team. Jezus, I feel, is one of the weaker mid laners that we have here at the World Championship, and he's got to step up if they're going to win. Yeah, because Bjergsen has had the upper hand easily in this matchup before, so I expect there to be four European players in this mid lane very early on. Svenskeren going to try and help out Jezus, and then Amazing, as we said, the last time that they beat SK, it was a couple of early ganks from him. That's all that Bjergsen needed, and he pretty much ran away with it. So lane swaps, that's the big deal. We'll see how Wild Turtle and Lost Boy deal with Freddy down in this bottom lane. All right. Mated has showed himself, so they know what's up. He's corralled the minions and focused their damage so that they will start pushing ahead. Interesting here, though, they've got a lane's little late swap here from Candy Panda. They weren't quite sure how the lanes would shake out, I guess, because they didn't have any deep wards. But he does make his way up there. And Raider got some solo experience in the meanwhile, and Dyrus got himself a few CS. Does ensure that the lane will definitely be pushing against SK, though. And Rated backing off and heading down to the bottom lane. They want to leave Candy Panda to one on one Dyrus, and they want to give Freddy support. Exactly. Oh, interesting. So, this Swain here wasn't even for that uh, lane counter, I guess. Uh, they're trying to have Candy Panda straight from the start versus Dyrus. 
And with that range advantage, he should have an easy time. They got the lane pushing against him, as we said. Let's see if Amazing makes an early move down here. Not messing around either. Over to the ward, and look at this. Onto the golems. He's going to come in from the backside. Want some golems to back away, not take too much of his health off before they actually get this one going. Meanwhile, Svenskren oh, is going to the top. Ah! Candy Panda! Tell you what, Candy Panda might actually die. There is someone to heal you. Svenskren coming in will get the slow. But oh, no! no! Oh, he flashed over, and Dyrus is going to go down. But the first blood actually came in down in the bottom lane as we saw Freddy go down. And now Enrage is in trouble. He's going to get locked up. And out of the Dark Shield. It's not going to keep him out, but the tower comes down, and it's a double! Kill for Enraging in the bottom lane as amazing on Lost Boy Fall. Freddy teleports back in. This is all going horribly wrong for TSM oh. already. TSM got their hands stuck in the pickle jar here. They wanted way too much down bottom. They didn't need that second kill, and it cost them two in return just to take down the support. They didn't even deny a minion wave down there because the teleport was ready for Freddy. Oh, big damage there onto Jezus as well. Both of those kills, funnily enough, going over to N-Rated. So certainly having the best start for him. We've seen him already face checking a brush at level one and giving up that first blood. This one certainly worked out a little better for him. It's going to give him some early wards. Let's look at that dive again. All right, so this is the first kill that we missed. And this is the kill that they executed cleanly onto Freddy. Good dive by TSM. They tank the turret. Bus Boy takes a couple of shots. Not so bad. But then they go for the full health Black Shield ready Morgana. Black Shield at level two from N rated. And man, does it cost them. Two kills for that, plus a teleport in from Freddy Cleanup Experience. Pretty sloppy down there from TSM. They are still ahead, but we also have to worry about what happened top lane. I said, they're going to have to worry about Dyrus up here. Already SK have shown focusing up top, the early gank to get him behind, and the fail flash is going to get in Dyrus's head. His mentality is crucial. Try and keep him balanced. And you talk about that experience that Freddy cleaned up. He's going to be the first to hit level six here. He's way ahead at the moment. Nobody else, Derek Bjergsen, just hitting level five in that mid lane. So he could very well start taking that lane all on his own once he gets that ultimate roll in. Bjergsen in this mid lane has built up a Tiny CS advantage over Jezzers, but Jezzers himself is playing careful because the jungle focus is not being on him like it was in game one. Everything was all about getting kills on Jezzers, getting Bjergsen rolling. I think Bjergsen feels he can deal with Jezzers on his own. Sven Skeren trying to pay a visit once again to the top lane. This time he is warded out and Dyrus should be safe for now. Yeah, Dyrus having none of it this time around. Last time he knows. He gets killed once, they're gonna come back for me. So he sets up double wards to protect himself. She has a sat back here. We did see Lust Boy and Amazing just pairing up there in the SK jungle to get some vision down. Looks like they're gonna go even deeper once again. However, both Freddy and Enrated after backing off won't find themselves in any trouble. Candy Panda, meanwhile, having the free farm in this top lane. Outside of obviously the uh, damage that was done to him by Dyrus just a little bit earlier on. And he leads the CS currently. But look at this amazing on Lost Boy. They're waiting here once again, but that wave's going to go through. Ryan Rated may well go in towards them. No. And again, you know, it was risky dive beforehand. It may be an even worse one this time around. The Dark Binding lands. Yep. There's going to be the Never Move. And now Lost Boy just going to have to force them away. And SKR safe once again. This time around, Sven Skeren's attention has been drawn. He's making his way down south. Freddy, I wonder how close he actually is to this level six here. This is a decent minion wave that's coming in. Uh, he's not going to hit it from this one, I don't think. But we'll be pretty close. And, well, if there's a minion wave underneath this tower, you definitely don't want to be thinking about diving him because he's going to be pulling everything back with a black shield in there as well. Slowly but surely, Sven Skeren is also starting to work his way down bottom. But... It is sort of dangerous for Svenskeren to be on this side of the map because TSM is spending so much time on this red jungle of SK. He's got to think that there are wards in here. You have to infer that because they've spent so much time down here, they've been dropping wards. Both of them did just now expire, though. So he's actually clear. And he just hit level 6. Good place for Kha'Zix. He can actually pull off a fairly strong gank now. Thing we need to pay attention to is the fact that Jezzers can throw that Mega Inferno bomb out from ranges. We haven't seen a Ziggs throughout this tournament yet. May well have just slipped some of their minds. 
that he doesn't need to be all the way down there. We'll keep our eyes on this one. I want to talk about the fact that Vayne is off on his own. He's ahead in CS over Wild Turtle. Quite considerably at the moment, actually. And that's surely a problem. While Cogmore can keep up pretty well with a Vayne late game, if Candy Panda can get going, they really need to start shutting him down. Yeah, they really have to worry about that split pushing vein because it's going to be a problem for them. They don't really have good answers for it. TSM is much more focused on the team fight, so they'll probably be focusing on those dragons and the teleports from Dyrus uh, trying to trade objectives. But really, um, the window on diving bottom has definitely closed for TSM. Freddy has hit that level six, and as you said, with the Morgana shield, uh, very, very dangerous to overextend down here again. It already cost Turtle a lot of CS. That's where a lot of that discrepancy is coming from, is the botched dive from TSM down bottom. They don't want to mess it up more for Turtle. But oh. he gets hit with Binding. Yeah, Binding and never move Ooh. could be a problem. That's a good knock-up onto Enrated. Not sure that the damage is really there to get a finisher, but now with the ultimate of Wild Turtle, that'll give him a bit more presence in that lane. Pink Ward being oh. stood on by Amazing. Svenska and his weight and actually will jump on top of him. Insta kicked away. Amazing to half HP. There's the Inferno Bomb coming through, but not enough. Everything avoided there. Bombs left, right, center. And Amazing finally burnt the flash out. Didn't save the Pink Ward though. That was the whole goal. <laughs> he still managed to get his hands on that one. I think the goal was actually to assassinate Amazing there. Trying to use the Pink Ward as well, bait. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, no kidding. <laughs> And they did at least get his flash out of it. So uh, not all is lost for SK. But as you said, TSM answered back. They actually get that pink ward. Once again, though, focus top here. They're returning to dive Dyrus. Candy Pin has got him under the turret, ready for a condemn. Well, where is the condemn? There is the ultimate already going. Knocks him against the turret. No. Style points for that one. Oh. They'll get the kill. Svenska and jumps yep. away. Nicely done. Instant TSM answer, though, with the dragon. Darius the Martyr, once again, they're sacrificing him up top. It could be okay, because he's still scrounging up some farm in the top lane. He's about still even with his counterpart, Freddy, from the bottom side. But again, it's the top lane turret traded for the Dragon, plus all of this focus onto Candy Panda. SK are putting a lot of money into this vein, and it's going to come online very quickly here. See how much of this Blade of the Ruin King he can get. Ready, pulling that ultimate down, keeping pressure on them. I don't think there's a move that's going to work out. There's the Soul Shackles. Amazing joins the party. Doesn't land the Sonic Wave. And Freddy and Enraging disengage. Oh. Everybody pulls in. Dyrus teleports down and gets himself a kill. That is exactly Five what he needed. Members. Bjergsen coming around the side. Yeah, Freddy needs to really hook the tower and hope that Svetska can get in. There's a big stun. Q from the Amazing lands and it's Dyrus. Then we'll get that one. Wild Turtles recalling here. We have Kazix coming down, but honestly, Svenska and not sure he wants to be here. That cost them two lanes of pressure. SK shove up mid, and they shove up top. More money for, fueled into Candy Panda. TSM, at least they did execute the tower dive well this time. When we said the door closed on tower dives, that was three-man tower dives. Five, five <laughs> man, still an option. <laughs> Absolutely. Bjergsen returns back to the mid lane. Can he land anything in Jezus? I think he's happy to just keep him at bay there. May throw a stun his way, doesn't land it. So, Candy Panda, he's gone back, got himself that Bilgewater Cutlass. We'll see how that progresses. Obviously, Blade the Rune King will be the first item out. And he has got himself a big chunk of farm. But now, Wild Turtle goes top. Candy Panda responds, goes bottom. And again, TSM, global gold, definitely in their favor. Uh, really, the point of power for SK is the vein. Will it pay off for them? They put a lot of emphasis getting Candy Panda ahead and trying to shut down Dyrus. But Maokai, regardless, he's going to finish that Rod of Ages. He's just going to try and soak up some damage here. We'll see if Candy Panda can make this worth. It's been a while since I've since we've seen Candy Panda do well on Vayne. It used to be a massive champion earlier on for him, but only played it once Whoa. this season. There is the dive coming in. Amazing to the ward. The kick comes around as well. And Freddy with the ultimate running, trying oh, to get right away with flash. flash and survive, but they may lose this tower now. But the oh. top tower, the, to the bottom tower, sorry, is being pressured. That wave will get cleared out by Jezus' ultimate. He will just about survive this one if he goes too deep. A lot of damage coming out of <laughs> 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 
but that bottom tower went down and they're still pushing. Nobody from TSM reacting. Dyrus is all on his own trying to defend against three members of SK. Lesbo goes back. He's going to try and get in there for the shield and buy some extra health for this turret, but they're shoved off so quickly. Three of them pushing through. Actually, they're going for Dyrus, who pops his ultimate in there, gets the three man knocked oh, no. Lust Boy knocks them all away. But Candy Panda's still fighting this one. They want Dyrus, they'll get him oh, as well. Against close. the tower, he was knocked. And there is Amazing now finding Freddy, who will lock him up. Will Freddy be able to escape this one? Great dodging with the ward. I think that Freddy might get him. Oh. And will not just save him, but gets the kill as well. Both teams trying all that they can to beat up on these top laners. It's beat up on Dyrus and Freddy today, but Freddy is actually able to survive. So SK come out a little bit more ahead. Candy Panda gets another assist, actually, at the turret, and they don't take down the secondary turret. SK Gaming doing their best to play spoiler here to TSM's party. They really want to try and get that number one spot, but they have to take a victory here to even draw level with Edward Gaming, who currently sit pretty. Uh, at the moment, start on Rogue Club. <laughs> get, get the right team out there. <laughs> Damn it! It's going so well on top then. So SK Gaming, though, blue buff. Jezzers will come across and collect this one. I was just about to say, but the rest of TSM, they're going to cause problems here. Sven may be forced to smite this one away. No, it doesn't look like... Yes, he does. So that's going to be taken away from Jezzers. That is a small win for TSM because Kha'Zix actually does have some decent wave clear of his own. It's not nearly Ziggs, but this is not the worst case scenario for SK having to smite that one. Sven definitely probably feeling good about it. Yeah, he'll enjoy that <laughs> one. And the theme's done for Jezus as well, so not exactly the end of the world. Red buff actually given to Wild Turtle, who just in time after uh, his Trinity Force comes in. TSM might be thinking about something here, especially with the Dragon just 120 away from spawning. You know, I kind of do have to question the allotment of wards here from TSM, though. You mentioned Dragon coming up in a minute. You kind of want to shift all your vision down to that area if you're going to want to take it because, you know, TSM, they do have the exact timer on it. They are the ones who made the trade for Dragon, but all of their vision is up on this blue top side, and they don't have a strong split pusher. They don't want to be on that top side of the map. Uh, I mean, Dyrus should be just hugging his turret trying to defend against Candy Panda. He's already got the Blade of the Rune King. He can't be out in the open versus Candy Panda. Some switch of vision would definitely be in TSM's favor if they could move some wards down. Oh, oh. Mm, Freddy, he's going to get ganged up on again. Wow. He wants wow. to. Doesn't matter what, Turtle's just picking him up. Lustboy tries to come around the side. Uh oh. Says, Thank you very much. I'll take that one. Has to use the monsoon, but the tower's on him. One more oh. hit will go down. Sven Skeren gets the kill, and it's a one for one trade. You could see Amazing was tanking the turret for a while, but he didn't want to take that last shot. And it does cost Lustboy his life here. Even Turtle did everything he could trying to get that heal in. Another dive down bottom with not the cleanest of results for TSM. Yes, they did get Freddy, uh, but again, cost them some exchange of gold. And SK will definitely be glad to take that one. Candy Panda is a monster up here. Now level 11, out levels Dyrus. There's no way Dyrus wants to go head to head with him. Yeah, interesting as well that they've allowed the Vayne to have so much free time in that lane and really get going. Oh, uh -oh. Jezus oh. getting stunned Can up here. Bjergsen not actually going to go from here. In fact, they're going to try and counter with this one. Bjergsen going to go low. Meanwhile, down on the bottom side, Svenskren kicked away. Three men there for TSM and the TP from Dyrus. They can't fight this though because Bjergsen got chunked so hard. Oh, he's going to get the stun though. Oh, Beautiful. Freddy locks up and taken down. That will turn the tables for sure. TSM playing it hard right now. Candy Panda finally joining this fight, but he's not being involved. They're going to instead try to turn their attention to that middle tower where SK tried to distract them. Candy Panda, I don't think he's got enough to take the tower. Oh, we'll do with Jezzers. <laughs> so once again, tower for Dragon traded for TSM. However, they did get a really nice it. pick there onto Freddy. Can they? Oh my what god! What are they doing? Bjergsen. I don't know what they're doing here. Bjergsen's going to surely go down. What? No! Go back to... That is live! He took him down! Holy the moly! Kill for Sven Skaren. Holy The Typhoon! The Typhoon! <laughs> <laughs> what screen are we on? Where's the computer? Tropical Storm play oh right here in Taipei. But SK Gaming, they get themselves a double kill for Sven Skaren. Lost Boy went down. They're still pushing on towards the inner turret in the mid lane. Freddy's going to protect the bottom. It is all going SK's way despite TSM getting Dragon. <laughs> 
What in the world happened? We've got to pick up the pieces, guys. All right. Secondary turret does go down mid in that exchange. And SK came out huge. I believe they picked, cleaned up a bunch of kills there because that was a dangerous jaunt through the forest for DSM. Yeah, I didn't really understand why they were trying to follow, fo Neither did the funnel through there with the Ziggs who can hit all three of you so simply. That was, for me, a little bit strange. A miscommunication seemingly from TSM. And that leaves SK Gaming now. 1,700, 1,600 gold in the lead in this one as we approach 20 minutes. They're 10-6 up. And for me, Candy Panda being left alone to get the farming lane. He's now sat 2-0-4 as well. That's a scary vein already. You, me you mentioned that. Uh, it looks like Spence Garen cleaned up a bunch of the oh, kills yeah. from the from the Typhoon John through the forest. He's now got five kills and a BF sword on top of this. He's looking to carry hard right now, and he just hit level 11. So gigantic power spike from Spence Garen, but good stun from Bjergsen could take him out. If, the, if TSM kills Spence Garen, that's a huge amount of the gold off of SK's roster right now. Well, right now, TSM trying to put the moves on the mid lane, but SK Gaming, they have that zigs, and it is a gigantic wave there. Oh, Freddy, they're coming for you, buddy. They're coming once again. Oh, they decided against it. He's already running. He's like, they're going to get top tower, though. They've yep. left them. They've abandoned it, and that's why they've decided to try and back away. But this is Candy Panda, who's got a massive stack of damage alongside Candy Panda. Sven Skeren just going to rip through this tower before they can get close. Well, they're going to do their best. It looks like Dyrus and Amazing are uh, going to try and... Well, they just throw a little baby there. A uh, answered one turret for two turrets here. TSM clean up some outer gold. Easier for TSM to answer objectives right now because there are extra turrets standing up for them. Oh, oh never mind. He didn't get that bottom one. Nope. They got a Zinx. And they've also got the block A down there. Wild Turtle still pushing though. Freddy's starting to have problems preventing him. I don't think this was the split pusher he was expected to face. But look... SK Gaming, they're all pulling back and they've got themselves that second inner turret of the game. It's 5-2 currently to SK Gaming. Candy Panda waiting off at the side. Dyrus, you know, he's been playing this one very cautiously in this top lane. Candy Panda constantly sits in a bush, waits, and Dyrus is, he's not falling for it. Those saplings are being used fully to check everything. That's what he said for the champions like nobody's going to be able to one versus one Candy Panda in the mid game here. TSM are all about the team fights, but SK have done a magnificent job of running them around the map. As we said before, when they have their completed roster back in the regular season of the LCS, this is the game that SK excelled at. They're bringing it full force here towards TSM. They want to play that spoiler and deny TSM the option of getting uh, the tiebreaker here. So that's the interesting thing because it's been Freddy that has fulfilled that split yeah. push role. They've taken his Nidalee and his Aatrox, which is obviously the, the champions that he'd love to have in that, but Candy Panda completely stepping up so far in this game. 2-0-4, 40, 50 CS ahead of that of Wild Turtle. And it's not just the fact that he's done so well. TSM really did leave him alone for a long time in that top lane. And Someone, somehow, are going to have to deal with that one. Obviously, Dyrus got his Rod of Ages earlier. He's going to be moving towards that frozen heart next of all, which will make him feel a little more confident. But look at SK. This is the SK that we were so pleased with and looked so good in the European LCS this spring, uh, this split, managing to group up so quickly to get the towers. I would expect TSM to start defending uh, objectives now. I mean, they want a team fight. Dyrus does have teleport, so they can sort of buy time for him to push. Uh, but Maokai, not the quickest of split pushers, so maybe they'll look for Dyrus to teleport in behind and sort of catch this group because both Vayne and Kha'Zix excel on their mobility. And TSM can shut it down. They've got the Maokai to lock him down, and then Bjergsen easily follow up with a stun and burst to take out one of those high priority damage targets from SK. This is really going to be a lot of weight on the Black Shield from N Rated. He has to be on point with it if SK wants to come out ahead in one of those. Oh, Candy Panda's already realized it. They were going to try and collapse towards him. He's backing off straight away. Dragon is up in 30 seconds time. And TSM, can they try and push the mid? No, nope. that Ziggs bomb is there once again. And if they're going to take it, they're going to have to tank it. And that is exactly what they do. That's the first tower in a while for TSM. But three outer turrets all now down. 
20 Can seconds, Dragon. They turn their advantage. They try to catch SK off guard. There's not a lot of vision from SK down in that river. And they may well get caught off from the side here. Yeah, can you play, sorry, Enrated having to pick up home guards there just to speed out of the base, I think, in time to join in for this one, knowing that that dragon was coming up a little quicker than they factored into things. But there oh is Gandhi Panda, he's got the stun onto Lost Boy against the wall, not quite got enough, tumbles away from the stun of Bjergsen though, and that is a lot of damage, will that scare TSM away, and should he? Freddy is back in the split pushing role, he has teleport, are they going to contest this dragon? It looks like they're circling around for it. Teleport ready. I think they're too late. I think they're too late. I don't think they can get close enough. In goes Venskaren, doesn't manage to land. It gets locked up straight away by Dyrus, but Flash is out. Can they disengage quick enough? That's the question. They come around the side. TSM don't want any of it. And it's going to buy SK the advantage. They're going to try and rush them in. Late teleport down means they lose the pressure top and they lose the dragon. Can TSM get inside their base though? It's it's going to be a long route around. It looks like the pings are back to Baron. Baron. Vision control not in SK's favor, though. TSM still have wards inside, so they won't have to rush into a trap. How many of these plays have we seen? Going to Dragon, one team going up mid, the others recalling or running back. Oh, and you want to start the that. The opposition hey. moving around. Sven's going, getting a big chunk of damage that was from Jezus. that Baron. Jezus threw the bomb in at Sven's like, thanks. Thanks, bro. Nice one. Different pages there, I ah, guess. But this could be dangerous for TSM on the same front. I don't think he meant to ward there. I think I was supposed hey, to go over the Hey, it's he's got a side stone. You can uh, make those mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> totally allowed. So, TSM, back to the drawing board. They kept them at bay, they got the dragon, and they are still just 1,500 gold apart, despite being three turrets down. So, technically, for TSM, there is money in the bank on the board. The question is, can they push them towers down? And can they slow this Candy Panda down on vain? Yeah, TSM, basically, they have to play it calmly here. Uh, if they just rely on Dyrus for the peel, Lust Boy to sit next to Turtle and not be by himself, uh, then they should be okay because Turtle is getting very close to his Blade of the Ruined King as well. When you have Trinity Force Blade on Cog, he is very, very much uh, self-sufficient. And even though he doesn't have the escape, they have the Janna and they have the peel we mentioned. So he should be okay with the dive in from SK. Push back here, a lot of sweeping going on. Freddy also going to have himself a massive wave here. Look at that gold difference over time. Swung slightly in a couple of different directions. There was that point where TSM had about 1,200 gold lead. But since about 17 minutes, this has been all about, T uh, about SK Gaming. And whilst that graph might be a sl slight re uh, misrepresentation, I feel, because the difference is not that big. Yeah, the actual value of the uh, difference is not that high. What I do want to commend TSM for is their ward coverage around this Baron Pit. Many people have said it, but SK, they do not buy that many wards, and it really limits their options here towards the late game when they're the ones who have the threat of the Vayne, who's very strong, one versus one, and can split. And uh, Freddy here, oh, actually, never mind, his teleport's not back up. But it makes it that much more dangerous and limits Candy Panda's options because they don't have the vision to call these plays. Well, they don't have a ward there at the moment. That is exactly what you mean. They need to get something in there, which is why you can see SK starting to make the move in towards that Baron River once again, sweep out everything TSM placed, and replace it with their own. This is a European team, after all. This is what we used to see, and they continue to flow on through. Bit of a gap starting to build, I feel, in gold between Candy Panda and Wild Turtle. Candy Panda is constantly off on the sides. You can see it's only a thousand gold right now, but Wild Turtle's having to group with his team while Candy Panda's constantly split pushing. That's, yeah. what, that's what SK have to rely on here. Uh, I mean, they're all about the spread out team fights, and TSM are all about the grouped up 5v5. You can go for it. Finding landing there, and SK Gaming not backed by Bjergsen's uh, stun. TSM have moved back towards the Baron Pit, and surely SK are just going to go mid. That's what they've done Ooh. so well. Yeah, that's a big chunk of damage from Wild Turtle onto N-Rated, though. Yeah, just a couple of shots there as well. That's all that landed. TSM ripped them, but again, they're going to try and pressure that mid. This is all they're doing, though. They're going to back straight off because Candy Banner is not with them. They can't engage in a fight while he's not there. There's right. no teleport, so he has to be involved sooner or later. And they don't want to take that uh, straight up 
even 5v5. They're going to have him split push, and they're going to try and catch people out as TSM try and deal with the split push. It's all about isolated targets here for SK. You can see it in the way that Sven Skaren's building his Kha'Zix. It's all about that damage. He wants to catch somebody. If TSM try and rotate, it oh, they got him, though! Exactly what I was expecting. Sven's the one that's caught off the side there. Dyrus, though, has to back off. It was a flash twist in advance. It didn't really lock onto the target they wanted. And Candy Panda, he's still pushing. Yeah, Kha'Zix is the slippery target, not the one that's easy to lock down here. Uh, Sven Skaren doesn't even have to burn a flash. Ult and Leap, enough to get him to safety. Candy Pan has done his job. Wave creates pressure for TSM. They have to answer that. Dyrus goes up, and all of their ward coverage around Baron cleared out by SK. That was an interesting one. Actually, I think TSM took more damage uh, than SK during that fight. In a 4v5. That's a worry. Yeah, that is a worry. I mean, add Bane into that, and you've got a real issue as the ward there just going to be disabled and then cleared out afterwards. But oh. we'll get blinded oh, in there. Svenska are actually going to jump in. Dyrus is off the back, so he needs to be careful. Look at the dude. Oh, no. oh hello, amazing. He comes oh. off the wall, and Candy Panda's waiting. Isolated target. SK get the pick. Vision control does pay off. They it they put it down when it counts here. They've got that control around Baron. They're looking for another pick while Turtle shoves mid. He tries, but the problem is you're against the Ziggs, and that bomb will be up shortly. So Wild Turtle's going to get next to nothing, trying to draw their attention away from that Baron. They are down on a four on five right now, but SK, they're not going to rush into anything. They're happy to take that pick, and they're going to go back to their tactic and play this one out slowly. Level 16 Kanda, Candy Panda, he far outlevels anyone on TSM right now. He is a monster. Let's see if he can get involved. He's waiting for the opportunity oh, that last the time. Yeah. They've got slight vision problems at this stage. Nothing up there because of that pink ward cleared things out and you can see they're moving as a three or four man team now just to make sure that they can get some control back of that top side wow they're going for it here lost boy may have said oh, they're, they're, they're from the back side freddy gonna be the focus bjergsen goes low jez has just pinned him on the wall meanwhile candy panda was chasing him this entire time oh. they've been focusing freddy as they kick him through the wall and now sk have to leave they've lost two men sk funnel into the jungle and tsm take their 5v5 they're happy thank you very much two kills for tsm now, what can they actually get out of it, though? Because all lanes are shoved. Massive split targeting there. They just didn't focus on anything, and Bjergsen gets out with his life. The dragon is up, and that is where they're going. They're going to deal with the gigantic oh, wave. Oh, that's a dangerous side. trap. To this set. is a tricky, tricky lane. They're going to see the teleports required. Wild Turtle taking low, but have they got enough on him? Sven Skaren instead. He's in trouble. He gets picked up. Now the focus in. Howling Gale doesn't quite catch on Jezus, but TSM get themselves another kill. They will take the dragon, and that is a big swing, and it's going to take gold, finally, in TSM's favor. It was quite a beautiful bait there, but they did have to use Darius' teleport to pull it off. Pearson comes in, 100% the support. As you said, he's on the wrong side. This is a split off team fight here. He has to burn Flash and Lust Boy saves him with the shield and then tries to get a little bit of heal off there over the wall too, I believe, with his Monsoon. And Bjergsen, able to survive, meant that Freddy, two versus one over there, had a hard time versus Dyrus and Amazing. And all that down by Dragon was slightly strange as well. Svenskun kind of went in there, Candy Panda sat back and said, it looked like the way he was saying, no guys, I don't think we should take this fight. He didn't Help get involved in it whatsoever. Him. Yeah. And now SK once again goes straight back to the Baron. And well, you mentioned it earlier. Europe, they've done this uh, almost exclusively over the course of this last split. And SK being one of the, the stronger teams when it comes to that kind of thing. Once again, getting vision around the backside of that pit. TSM looking to group up with four around the mid lane. What's becoming evident here is when these fights do happen, and like you said, they don't want to get drawn into this 5 for 5 there's, there's no tank on SK. They can't go into those prolonged fights. Freddy kind of can try and draw the attack, oh. but look at the damage on towards him. Red he has to flash away. Still going to go down. Wild Turtle finds the target and shreds down Freddy. Freddy burns to the ground. Man, Turtle with just the W active and ultimate spam. Ridiculous damage, melting Freddy. As you said, no real tank, and he's not close enough to any oh, minions. Oh. Shield coming in there, so he got binding from and rated, but I'm not sure he really wants to stick around there. That's the problem that they've got. You know, Sven's going, oh, he's going to get stunned up. Flash from Lustboy. <laughs> not quite landing with the Howling Gale. 
could have been a lot more dangerous. Amazing. Slightly wide with the Q means that Jezus can walk away. And TSM, are they going to go Baron or are they going to push mid? It looks like Baron. These aggressive uh, Jenna plays. Some of them have been spectacular. That one, a little bit missing the mark. Threw everything at him, even the Frost Queen. Another setup here, and Rated almost walking into it. They're trying to bait somebody into that side lane, Ooh. but it's not going to happen. Instead, SK do regroup. Here come TSM. They want to sweep around the back of them. SK pushing forward. Freddy not with them, has got teleport, but TSM again. They're we going to get drawn they're into waste, something They're wasting here? quite a bit of time here. SK are gaining uh, some pressure in mid Ooh. and cleaning out bottom. They've got teleport on Freddy, so they're fine. That oh, is happening. Oh, it's a good bind needing to die and stop him coming in, but amazing. He's going to look for this one. Nice jump away from Svenska and Frost Queen actually used to stop them chasing through completely. And honestly, Wild Turtle, he's almost got a free reign on this oh, with no one, one with really any oh. armor, any defense. Burton will take and Rayton. There is Jezus having to flash and back Ben is going tower. back door. This, or wow. The front door on the top turret. He's going straight for the inhibitor turret. He TSM, they're pretty low on health there. They're going to go towards the Baron. This is tricky. Mega Inferno Bob was used a moment ago. There's the Monsoon. That will top everyone off. Candy Panda comes back around. The teleport from Freddy coming in towards the top lane. Are they going to be able to sneak around? You can see Sven and he's uh -oh. looking to jump in. Candy Panda comes around the side. Wild Turtles is focused, but he got slowed down. Gets himself one kill. Can he get a second? He does, but he will go down. Lost Boy's focused off. Jezus locks on towards him. Sven Skerin comes leaping around the side. He's shut down Wild Turtle, and TSM has scattered to the wind. That's exactly where they don't want to be. This fed Kha'Zix cleans up. Now they've got control of Baron. It's up to Dyrus. Solo man to try and stop this. There's not much he can do, though. Freddy can tank it with his ultimate. Oh, Jez is oh. decently low, though. Going to get knocked by another sapling. There's Lost Point coming up. Dyrus will dive his way. Oh, ah, onions. there is a Zonius. Is it enough, though? No. It is enough. Oh. The shutdown for Svenska on to Dyrus, and they can turn back onto the Baron. No one outside of Lost Boy is going to have to do a miracle Howling Gale. Doesn't release it, wow. and the Baron goes to SK Gaming. Whew. All right, let's take another look. As you said, they were low in this, and they had to use the Janna Monsoon just to heal up. Turtle is isolated, so Scan's going to easily eat him up. Candy Panda takes down two before they're able to finish him off, and Freddy the entire time, full health draining everyone. Great job by SK splitting up the squad of TSM. Without that Jenna Monsoon, they kind of panicked. And it was always a tricky Baron. Three of them went in. They'd already used the Monsoon, as you said, to top themselves off starting the Baron. So without that disengage, it was tricky. Now Sven Skerin, is he going to walk into a trap? It's only Lustborn Bjergsen here. They're going to lock on 100% done and rated. He goes down. Bjergsen gets him again. He's going to have nightmares. Bjergsen is just dominating him. Three kills, basically. I mean, and Raiden's got nothing to stop that happening. And again, down this time on that bottom side. Lee's and at 255. And TSM look to be making a move towards Candy Panda. Mm. What's he going to do? He's already backed away. Looking to pressure this secondary turret here. Dyrus is not with them, but again, he has his teleport. So he can easily go answer Freddy's wave that Freddy's creating right now. TSM going to get. A big chunk of the turret. Let's see if they decide to tank it and finish it. Yep. That's all they can do, and they do take it down. Nicely done from TSM. And that's all built off that one play. Taken down and rated. I was about to say, you know, while it's all well and good popping that support, you are only taking down a support with the ultimate of your mid laner. It's Bjergsen. Bjergsen Syndra. This is why people don't give it to him. He cons consistently creates plays for the team. One support kill, gets a turret, gets a dragon. Another big chunk of global gold brings TSM right back to even in this game. Insane yeah. stuff. That's a Baron of SK still, don't forget. So they just pushed and took those objectives, despite the fact they took that Baron objective a moment ago. Well, I think if casting two years of the European LCS has told me <laughs> one thing that now, uh, as such a close game like this, where SK do pick up a Baron, they're less, less likely than a lot of teams to actually be aggressive with that Baron. We've just seen there, and Rated getting caught out actually with the Baron on. They've lost more than when they didn't have it. And I, a lot of it does have to do with this TSM squad that they have. They are so strong grouped up. This fed Kha'Zix is only going to be a real factor if TSM panic and split up again. Because if, if he goes all in, building full damage like this, Dyrus can lock him down super easily, as we've said. 
So really it's all about, you know, can Spinscare and Candy Panda coordinate their threats? Because Darius can't go for both of them. Oh, SK trying to push forward and get some damage, but they are kind of lacking range when they want to get some poke on towards those towers. And they're taking more than they're giving, honestly. Candy Panda comes in, takes a couple of towers, almost takes the Howling Gale. Down to half hit points, has to back away and get some lifesteal. Yeah, that could be a bit of a problem for the Candy Panda's getting incredibly close to that one. And the fact is that you're always at risk then of a big stun out of Bjergs. And let's see, Svenska are actually coming in. They're going to try and knock them away somewhat from that tower. But you see, minions wiped out very, very quickly there. Does SK try and get in? And they don't want to risk this yeah. with Candy Panda at half health. Yeah, really, their only options are to throw those bombs and those missiles from Svenskaren in over and over, because you cannot dive onto this team. The giant of Mansoon is back up. Blessed Boy's ready this time. He's standing next to Turtle, which is going to be crucial. <laughs> and this is all they can do at the moment, is the, uh, the bomb. Thank you very much. Lots of gold. They are trying to set traps. They want to catch somebody out. They want to see if Blessed Boy's going to walk into those blind spots. Wild Turtle step in just out of position, doesn't quite go for it. And they're not wandering helplessly into those woods. And that's really all SK had. You can, they just try to prove. They had a little bit of Baron buff, but they can't see it down. They can't pressure. They need TSM to make a mistake here. Yeah, I mean, if somebody was going to be the point man for one of those plays, it would be Freddy. But look at his items. He does not have that much defense right now. His resistances are extremely low. He has no armor to deal with the barrage that Wild Turtle is going to put out. Uh, with that Blade of the Ruin King, Trinity to Force, Phantom Dancer, and soon to be Infinity Edge. Once he gets Infinity Edge, Freddy's going to just melt. You've got to hope to get in there and catch him out. Svenskren, who gone full monstrosity Kazix at this point. <laughs> I mean, just all don't want damage that here. on you. I mean, is that a Bloodthirst or an Infinity Edge he's going to go towards next? I don't know. He just wants all of that damage in there. It can be fun, and it can be good if he can get on top of Wild Turtle. But as you proved already, Monsoon can blow them away. Once you lose that gap closer, it's going to be tricky to close the gap once again. Right, he's betting on catching TSM out, you know, catching them a bit split. So it will pay off if he finds somebody on the side. Oh, and it's Bjergs and he's caught, but it turns that ultimate around. More on that is just about keeping him in there, but Amazing. he finds the target. They turn back on towards Dyrus. Dyrus does go down, but as they saw, immediately Wild Turtle shreds down Freddy, and now it's a four on three. What's Amazing, Amazing going to do here? Will he follow through his Q landed? They're actually fairly low, and honestly, if Candy Panda comes back around this side, he could cause some problems. There's a bomb coming out. Bjergs and gets the stun on Twin Ray. He will fly. Here comes Candy Panda. Oh! oh, not quite. Not quite enough from uh, Wild Turtle. Crap and going off. in He's for gonna... that turret and summon a heal Kobe. Don't get too carried away. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, Kreplo was talking about the Chaos day after day after day. The heal and shield from Les Boy. Crucial there. Right at the last second. Holy moly. Wow, this game is on a knife edge right now. Just 200 gold between the two teams and provingly real, real picky fight. Sven Skaren so close to zeroing out Bjergsen there, but quickly, amazing, comes to his support. An all-European brawl that TSM came out on top in this time around. Candy Panda again, kind of off the side and He's struggling to get involved in these fights. He's very much trying to maneuver on the edge of it, which is exactly what you should do as the AD carry. But he can't get close enough to the, the actual big fight. Those carries are being protected so heavily. They've split pushed about as much as you can really split push. They've got all the outer turrets down and cracking through the inhibitor turrets is uh, really the big issue for SK. And it, since they don't have the ward coverage to really control the map around Baron, as we said, makes it much harder for them to call those plays at mid. TSM really doing a good job of establishing control uh, a good 15 yards up in front of the Baron. Nice line here through the entire blue side jungle. Well, they were trying to make a play there to get Candy Panda, but that pesky pink water, I think three people walked over before they realized it was there. Stop them from getting in, but they pretty much own this area of the map right now. They're pushing in. And SK, yeah, that's the decision that SK going to have to make. How do we work around this one for They're now? Them. They've got five men in that middle area. 
TSM pushing down towards the inner towers. SK looking to fight, possibly. Darius, never move, catches on him, but they don't want to put the damage on towards the main tank. You can see they have shredded in down to half hit points. SK just slowly picking their targets. Wild Turtle jumps up, his fence going, taken uh... away, and dropped by Wild Turtle. Megra Bonobomb lands on Wild Turtle. He's very low right now. And SK, can they try and take an advantage? There's a recall going on here for Wild Turtle. We're going to see Cyrus so, recalling, so SK are staying. Well, they can't get much done. Obviously, they lost Ben Scan, so they're outnumbered here. Uh, TSM, well, all they really have to do is be able to defend this one push. It looks like they could even collapse. What? Bjergsen's not coming, but they're also doing a pincer here. This is only a three-man pincer. Bjergsen needs to get there. He was clearing up topside. <laughs> They have to let him... Oh! They Got found Freddy. Freddy's in trouble, and he's going to get shredded once again while Turtle comes around. There is Bjergsen. And again, TSM find the pigs, and it's SK trying to find them. There's the flash stun. Can they find a lot to take it down? Is it enough? No! He gets away. Dark finding on amazing. The damage does not follow through from Jezza, though. Darius and Frenzema. TSM, <laughs> they were turned back to Baron once again. So, Whew. as TSM do this, Baron, they've got the vision control. Let's see how bold SKR with their face check. Nope, they're just going to completely yeah. trade it. All right, well, since they're not going to uh, do anything here, let's go back to that first play that started all of this. Sven Skaren jumping in on Wild Turtle. It seemed like a suicide mission, but he had vision of Turtle. He did not have vision in the bush where Lust Boy was, so he thought it was an isolated Turtle. If he was isolated, that would have been an execute. That would have been a 100% kill. He could have hopped right back out uh, scot-free. However, because of the vision control of TSM, uh, Lust Boy sitting in that bush, no chance. It made him look like a fool. It's funny, that's the first Dragon out of six that SK Gaming actually have got this game. And look at the gold, there's less than a thousand difference between the two teams. Obviously, SK getting that Baron and having a turret lead here also definitely helps them. You look at the kills for them, six for Candy Brand, a seven for Svenska, and the two big players on this one, Freddy, eight deaths to his name, not something that we've become used to from Freddy. Yeah, he's dead weight in this game, honestly. He's been carrying hard so long that he's become a backpack himself, I think. <laughs> At the moment, though, SK, we do see Guardian Angels popping in. Sven Skeren and Candy Panda now picking them up. Well, don't give him too hard of a time. <laughs> Remember the name of this game yes. for the first 30 minutes was just smash the top laner for both of these teams. Freddy and Dyrus taking a beating here. Dyrus has come out better, though he weathered the storm fairly well. Back up there now by himself, being able to split push. His teleport ready once again. Let's see, though. Can you pin it down bottom? Uh, this is the opportunity for TSM to take an outer turret. Can they switch fast enough? Long range stun not working yet. Oh, Dyrus has to defend this. Can he panda's pushing it hard. He could even probably die. Somebody has to go back. Here goes Dyrus, and I'm not sure Dyrus can 1v1 him. This is going to be a tricky, tricky fight with that Guardian Angel on him. Lost Boy can't caught out. Dyer binding on him. SK keeping them busy here. But remember, TSM have the Baron. This is all time delay, really. Candy Panda continues. Four men versus four in mid. Dyrus. Oh, here we go. They're going to try and collapse onto Candy Panda. Dyrus needs to push down there with him, though, to stop that recall from Candy Panda Can't coming in. Vision? Is he going to get away from this one? It's going to be close. The sapling going to go in. He's gone. Close, though. Let's see. Look at this map movement from SK, though. They took that time while TSM were trying to cut off. Candy Panda to swing up towards the top side. They can take what, this what, what can you really gain from the top side? It's mm. mostly wasted movement here from SK. They completely mispositioned themselves and they give up a free turret because of that weird movement up to the top side of the map. There's nothing on the top side of the map for them to take. Baron's gone. There's not even vision control you need up there. Huge win for TSM. They get the free turret and free inhibitor turret. Oh. Gonna get on towards it. I think they may take it. Finally, Jezus comes around. Wait, held it on towards that Mega Inferno bomb. Remember, this is a TSM Baron still. Hasn't run off yet, and they can quite easily tank through those turrets. And I tell you what, this inhibitor turret has not got a great deal of hit points left. They will be hard pressed to keep them off it in the next wave. Gonna push on through. Can they finish that one off? Oh. It's very close. One more will do it. There they go. It's Wild Turl that gets in there for that one. Can he use the ultimate? I didn't Gale. get anything. Gales, they hit the binding. He was gonna go in and kill Turtle, but once again, Les Boy to the rescue. 
Jupiter is the target. And I think SK may well back away from this one. Yeah, they're going to let TSM take it. Make sure they don't go any further on this one. And finally, one team makes the breakthrough into the base. Clears out the inhibitor. And SK Gaming now very much on the back foot, which honestly they have been for around about the last 15 minutes of this game. Yep. Very, very good hold in the game now for TSM. They've got the pressure of super minions. They're the ones with the team fight comp. All they really have to worry about is mispositioning against this team. If somebody strays off too far, SK still have plenty of damage. They can easily uh, take down a target who's out of position. Candy Panda, though, running into the jungle where they have absolutely zero vision. That's a little dangerous at this stage in the game. Yeah, he's holding really Candy Panda that's gone past the halfway point of the map here, I think, for SK yeah. in the last minute. So, I mean, obviously SK have been trying to hold TSM to the mid so that Candy Panda could start to push things up. But now we see... And something that SK actually did earlier on in the game was group and push really quickly and decisively. They've not done that here for a while after falling back. And finally, they're going to get some more wards down in TSM's jungle. And something that I'm looking for now, especially since everybody's almost done with their builds, they've got plenty of money, you need to fully upgrade your sweepers for the team fights. They've got a vein and a Kha'Zix. The what are they doing? Fully upgraded sweepers are huge for TSM. Well, they're just trying to stall Candy Panda, and the rest of TSM are going to start taking Nexus turrets. They're going straight like, through. The Nexus turrets are all that's in their way, and SK Gaming are coming around behind them at the moment. This is not the position they want. They're going to come around. Can they catch on towards Lost Boy? They're taking down the Nexus turrets. Yeah, Wild Bell shreds it down. That's one down. Teleport comes in. Dyrus joins the fight. Sven scares the focus target. That's Bjergsen's ultimate going down. They're going to lump on towards him. They're going to catch on Lost Boy. Wild Turtle picked off at the side here. That's a Double for Sven Skarin. He locks in. Goes for the reset on towards Bjergsen. One more hit. Gets it. And SK Gaming have just cleared out TSM with an ace. They got him split up. Baited them into the base. SK come in. TSM completely scatter in there. Turtle is without his support. Down by the Nexus turrets. But Bjergsen's up by the top turret. And they get isolated. It's an ace. That could be the game. There's a 40 second death timer on this one. SK oh. Gaming are just going to charge up the mid lane. I'm not sure they've got the time. This is going to be really tricky. The first one to spawn is Lost Boy. He has got Monsoon to try to blow them away. They're going to tank out as much as they can here. And SK Gaming are going for it. They've got a lot of damage coming in. Look at the spawn time. It's crucially 20 seconds there or there about. Oh my god. Of them. The rest are going to take longer. And SK Gaming are moving in for the kill here. That one Nexus turret will go down. And Raider falls to the tower. Second they've Nexus got it. falls. Got it. Lost Boy is coming up in three, but Whoa. SK Gaming get the ace inside of their base and win the game. Oh my god. So TSM did not have to force anything. They decide to corral themselves inside by these turrets and then they just get pulled apart. And their battle lines, once they break their battle lines, it's it's just like the, the Greek phalanx. Like if you guys break your line, then you lose all the power of your team. And SK Gaming fans will be asking what could have been, that's for sure. Yeah. They end their World Championships, two wins, four losses, and they also force Team Solo mid into a potential matchup against Samsung White, who are currently the number one seed over in Group A, and that is gonna be a very hard best of five for TSM to face because they can no longer go to a tiebreaker versus Starhorn Road Club. Yep, successful spoiler pulled off here for SK. You can see it, the faces of TSM. Especially, especially after AHQ have just taken down EDG in the previous match as well. You've gotta be thinking as a TSM player, you know, if we win this, if we manage to get that tiebreaker and then beat Royal Club, on paper and realistically from what we've seen so far here in Taipei, the route would be much simpler to get through the next round. Now though, it's looking like Samsung White is going to be the next opponent for TSM. The thing is, for TSM they had the last 25 minutes of that game in their control. Slow, steady, controlled play. And then they just decided Let's go straight up mid. <laughs> I 
I didn't mind this late. SK left, just the, door, left, the, left the door open for them. They were like, come right in. <laughs> we'll, we'll trade you a Nexus turret for the game. But, I mean, really, as we said, the, the power of the team was when they were all together. And if mm. Dyrus is trying to clear these waves and he has to teleport in, teleporting in with your main tank, your front line, you cannot afford to have him arrive those three seconds late to the team fight. He needs to be there at the very beginning, or else, as you said, the Kazakhs and the mm. and the Vayne that are skirting around the sides, all of a sudden, they can dive right in. And the big thing is, of course, that Bjergsen did use that ultimate onto Sven Skeren. It didn't 100 to 0 him. It didn't take him down. I think the Black Shield got on him as well. Of course, he had that Mora Malmordius. Everything suddenly popped in, and then he got cleanup duty going, and Bjergsen was like, oh my god. Guys, turn around. Wild Turtle got separated. What a finish again here in Taipei. We are having an absolute amazing finish to the group. I'm not sure we're going to survive today, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but the thing is that SK have always been a team that have capitalized on late game mistakes from others. They're not always quite as monumental as the one that we've just seen there. But as you said, what could have been from SK? Sadly, we're never going to find out. Certainly not this year. Svenskeren had an amazing game in that last one. It, that's it for, for uh, SK Gaming. But mm. good way to finish it, beating out TSM for that. But of course, for more on that wild one, let's check in with the guys at the analyst desk. There are no words. There are no <laughs> words. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of words. That okay. was a <laughs> rowdy game. Um, I can't say most of them on broadcast. This though. is one of the times where I will start at the end of the game and go back to the beginning. What on earth was in Team Solo Mid's mind? I literally don't understand. Oh, no, no, I okay, want to know okay, who okay, made the okay. call. Uh, okay. What goes through the head right there is, okay, we're getting Vayne split push and we have no way of breaking it open because if we have to switch lanes, by that time Vayne gets too much pressure. We're strong, we're in a straight 4v4, so let's just go mid, get the tower, and back out safely. However, Dyrus TP'd in way too late, they got completely flanked, uh, they got engaged on the wrong targets, and Vayne made it back to base, ready in a position to fight before TSM was able to organize at all. So that all, all goes back to Candy Panda split pushing as Vayne, which is, by the way, the main point of that strategy, which SK only figured out about 45 minutes into the game. Yeah. But <laughs> they figured it out, and yeah, that's made him win yeah. the game. And even if they do actually fight a 5v5 anyway, that's like the ideal positioning for the battle anyway, is these really chaotic spread out fights where Vayne gets to isolate yeah. somebody whilst done or not doesn't matter. You know, Swain and Ziggs can deal damage to large areas, whereas TSM have to peel in a specific direction for the Kog'Maw, right? Vayne, at, like, Cinder has to set up for one person. It's all very directed and in a very open environment. That's exactly the kind of fight SK would take. Well, and if we just look at the crucial ultimates that were used, or crucial abilities, rather, I mean, Crumbs and I were just talking about how Turtle used his W to try and attack a turret, and by the it time the, the fight yeah. rolled around, it wasn't anything. And then uh, Bjergsen used his Syndra ult onto Kha'Zix, who is, was, a tank. Who, who is a tank, had a black shield, had a maw, no, the Black Shield only came in after the ult. Oh, okay, but had had a lot of MR <laughs> in any case. Yeah, all right. Let's talk a little bit about the picks and bans. We saw the Swain coming up for Freddy. Uh, questionable pick in terms of effectiveness. He was camped, let's be fair. Uh, same token as well. We did see the first pick, Kha'Zix. I initially didn't like it when picks and bans was happening, but Sven Skira, 9, 3, and 4, his performance was stellar. I actually think that the Swain pick was effective in the psychological warfare. Even though it went like 0-10, by the fact that they picked Swain threw TSM off guard. I feel like they didn't really know how to how to deal with him. In the early game, they kept diving Swain over and over and over and having Vayne just get endless farm, endless split push. And that played to SK's team comp strength for some oh. reason. They just kept going with it. I completely agree there. I think we should even have a replay that's going to show it. Basically, uh, if we can get that on your screen right now. Yeah, basically this is level one right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you. Uh, we can roll the clip already. So what you're gonna see is Raiders is freezing that lane, and why is there no counteraction on bottom lane? Why did Kogmo and Janna just run straight into bottom and start CSing? Is because TSM was a hundred percent convinced that the Swain was a counter pick to the Maokai, and therefore had no feasible notion that there could ever be a lane swap. Bottom lane, uh, Kogmo and Janna just ran into lane and started the lane normally, and Freddy just got the wave pushed to him. Meanwhile, yeah. Maokai was frozen on top lane. Yeah, and when you when you don't stack those minions, call back to replay, right? minions like that, the last hits will slowly and inevitably push it forward. Yes. And the thing about it too uh, is, had they been there, 
uh, a little bit earlier, we saw Freddie positioned in the second lane brush. And what, what sometimes what you can do is actually just walk into the minion line and break the freeze that way. So he was set up to break the freeze. But then when he saw them not even trying to freeze, he backs off immediately. Now what happens in this is that it then forces you to dive their bot laner because we immediately saw N-Rated start to recall, head back down into the bottom lane. And if you don't dive him at that point, well, you get really screwed. So of course they come down, try and dive, and then they totally botch that, give a double kill over to Morg. Yeah, I just wanted to explain how you break the freeze. Basically, you stand in your range minions, enemy attacks you, you range minions attacks the enemy champion. Meanwhile, the enemy minions are still killing your minions. The wave's at a deficit. Once you have less minions than the enemies, your lane will inevitably push towards you, and that's exactly what you want when you're when you're a top laner. That's yeah, you'll simple. get dove, but you'll get a lot of experience. Yep, that's simple. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> game was extremely chaotic. I think both teams had... <laughs> questionable calls <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, throughout the game. And, and it was trading objectives. There was all sorts of nonsense going on. Uh, as we get late into the game, I want to pull a second replay up that we've got. It's about 40 minutes into the game. And this is a team fight that TSM ends up winning. But it's just all over the place. Uh, roll the clop out. And Crumbs, talk me through what stands out in your mind. So Syndra's in the brush. And Kha'Zix with the Mar decides to just try to 1v1 Syndra. Almost gets it, but amazing with the quick reflex that goes on. Finishes him off. Right here, Maokai did not need to go in. He gets caught and gets finished off. Now, Krepo, this is why you get the Frost Queen. <laughs> because yeah. you slow and you save your AD carry. <laughs> I mean, do, do you think it made a big difference, though? Let's be fair as they yeah, carry on but running. Krabs, hang on, watch out. Let's see what's going to happen right here. Uh, no yeah. locket. Mikhail's. Dana ulti. So right now, Morgana gets out of position, gets hit with the stun, flashes out. Vayne tries to get the third Silver Bulls proc. Almost gets it. He gets healed, Crucible, and... Uh, lock it. Lock it. Lock it. That's so. where you get him kills. Yeah, no, that's, he, yeah. he lived without it regardless. That's so. where, that's where Kobe, <laughs> Kobe got very, very excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, and when we talk about SK this game too, it was very indecisive split pushing from Vayne. It definitely could have been executed a lot better. In fact, that's not why they won the game at all. They won the game because TSM made a tremendous error. Uh, and it's with how far ahead Vayne was in that game and how obviously panicked TSM was about that split push, they certainly didn't kind of drive the de the knife home, you know, enough, I really. think when Turtle had 300 CS, Vayne had 400, so that's quite a bit. Yeah, honestly, a lot of the builds came online fairly late. Like, we keep making fun of item builds, but I think it's honestly very true that we, we keep seeing these builds that don't quite pan out. The late McHale is one of them. The fact that Freddy didn't get a Zonia's like ever this game when for some reason he buys Riley's, so a health item on top of his Rod of Ages, which is a health item against Blade of the Rune King Kogma. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's kind of weird as well. Um, also, Infinity Edge, uh, a better, I think, third item than Phantom Dancer, so we can actually kill turrets a little bit faster. Maybe they use that mid-game power spike um, for the Kog'Maw, right? Like, these little things that are going to matter, and when you have games this close, it, actually, those are going to make the difference in games sometimes. Yeah, I completely agree. Just to finalize the point before we move on, Candy Panda, 470 CS in the title, total game, while total 343. So Candy Panda definitely uh, putting on his carry pants. Final thoughts? Well, I mean, obviously, like, Candy Panda was given the split push this game, but that's also, he got that because TSM just pretty much ignored him. They couldn't lane against him with the Maokai, so he was just free farming, and they didn't Which do... Because of the Swain pick, actually. Yeah. yeah Tell you, the mind games won them that game. And I think that's what's so concerning Learning about this for TSM is that when they get thrown for a loop in game, we saw it against Starhorn Royal Club. We saw it against here, uh, against them here. They seem to just implode. They don't really know what to do. They can't really formulate a plan in game. Well, we do have to shuffle this one along with those results. It does mean that Group A is completely wrapped. Group B rather is completely wrapped up. We'll be right back with our next match from the Taipei Group Stage: Samsung White versus Edward Gaming. Stay with us. He's in trouble, he's gonna get locked up and out of the dark shield. It's not gonna keep him out, but the tower comes down and it's a double kill! Candy Panda comes around the side while Dennis is focused, but he got slowed down. Gets himself one kill, can he get a second? He does, but he will go down. Bjergs and he's caught, but it turns that ultimate around. More on that one, he is just about keeping him in there, but amazing! He the target. They turn back on towards Dyrus. Sven Skerens the focus target, that's Bjergs and Zonsman going down. They're gonna lump on towards him, they're gonna catch on Lux Boy. While Turtle picks over the side here, that's a double for Sven Skerens. He's in, goes for the reset on towards Bjergsen. One more hit, gets it, and SK Gaming have just cleared out TSM with an ace. 